Hey guys, K420, and I'm back. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be in this video, but it's easier for me to show you all the information I have to show you this way instead of reading it all out to you and you're not seeing this for yourself. His parents, this you need to see. If you have a child who has been diagnosed with ADHD, if you have a child who you think may have ADHD but hasn't been diagnosed yet, if you are a parent who feels that their child is being medicated and you are concerned about addiction in the in their future or that the medication is causing other you know behavior issues anything stay with me because this this is so important this is so important i literally had to like breathlessly explain this to my best friend because um, she has a child with ADHD and I never wanted this to happen, you know, to come along and her doctor to say something about this and for her to think that this was a good thing because it's not. So what am I talking about? Well, let's see. just approved the first device to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. We first told you yesterday about the breakthrough that will be marketed as a treatment for children who are 7 to 12 years old. And now in a clinical trial, kids got low-level electrical pulses while they slept. The results were similar to the effect of non-stimulant drug treatment. An estimated 6.1 million children have been diagnosed with ADHD in the U.S. according to a national survey of children's health in 2016. Our Dr. Tara Narula is here. Good morning. Good morning. So how does this work? The device is basically a new treatment that's non-drug related, which is great for a lot of parents who don't want to put their kids on medication. And so it's the size of, of course a it's great. And basically, it has a wire that attaches to a patch that's placed on the child's forehead. They wear it at night while they're sleeping for about eight hours. It's meant for kids who are over the age of seven, not on medication. And essentially, the way that it works is it emits a low-level electrical pulse that essentially stimulates a cranial nerve called the trigeminal nerve. And the idea is that that nerve then sends signals into the brain, particularly to the areas that are important for attention, for functioning and behavior. And the idea is that it can help symptoms. And they did see in this small study of about 60 kids over four weeks, it did reduce symptoms. It seems to be on par with the effects seen with non-stimulant medications. So this is the area of the brain that's still developing, right? This is the executive function executive area of the brain. Function, right doesn't get just fully cooked until about age 25. So, so what's, what's the downside of it feels like you're tinkering with a part of the brain that's developing. Well, this is clearly the first of its kind, and I think probably we have a long way to go in terms of the research. But as far as this study, they did not see any serious adverse events. They did see side effects like drowsiness, increased appetite, some fatigue, headache, teeth clenching. But as I said, it was a small study, and it was over a short period of time. And we don't know what it would be like if kids were on medication when they used this. How do you know the difference between a child that's a little rambunctious, a little distracted, a little hyper, and some that has ADHD. I think there's a lot of confusion about what yeah. exactly this is. So I've just, seen some kids go, ah, oh, maybe you got some issues there. <laughs> they don't know that's just a personality. Right. So I'm talking about Grace Henry. Right. Oh, I was just, absolutely the, not. A lot of the symptoms like daydreaming or fidgeting yeah. or really talking a lot could be misconstrued. But really, this is a chronic disorder. It affects about 10% of children. And it's characterized by three things. Hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. And the important thing that is that it's pervasive. So you see it at school and at home. It persists for longer than six months. And they can't and, control it. And it affects function. That's really if their function is limited academically, socially, emotionally, that's when you might, you know, want your child to be seen and evaluated. Yeah. They may in fact have this. We know that a third of these yeah. kids have other disorders like anxiety disorders or mood disorders. A third will go on to carry the symptoms into adulthood. And the issue is that it really can be associated with things like increased risk of substance abuse, injuries, either accidental or intentional, poor self-esteem, poor academic performance. So important to identify it, really yeah. truly identify it, and get kids treated for it. Once um, you have it, do you always have it? Some people may outgrow it, and some people, as I said, it can persist into adulthood, for sure. And there are treatments, you know, we know for kids under six, the recommendation is behavioral therapy. And this is really where we teach parents how to kind of reinforce positive behaviors and eliminate those ones that are negative. And also then medication in combination with behavioral therapy for kids over six. First thing in mind, drugs. drugs. We typically use our stimulants like Ritalin or Adderall, um, but as but important for this discussion, a lot of parents don't want to put their kids on these yes. drugs because they have side effects too. Yes. Things like 
All right, let's see here. Um, you get the hint. I, I wanted it to basically for you to see the device. Now let's get to business, okay? Because the doctor just spewed a bunch of talking points that she thinks you want to hear uh, because you don't want to medicate your child. None of us do. So what do we do? We see something new come along and we say, oh my God, we don't have to medicate our kids anymore. Well, I want that. I don't want to have to medicate them. It's a non-drug treatment option. And you don't realize that you're doing more damage than what you are already doing putting them on this medication. The first FDA approved device to treat ADHD. Well, <clears throat> if you're here and you know anything about the, the our government, our CIA, our our uh, the way things have gone in our history, then you will understand what I'm about to say to you. All right, this device it goes on your child's brain first of all. Every night for eight hours, your child will take this patch, which has got an electric, uh, excuse me, electrode, and it and it will be a uh, try something old nerve. I, I didn't. I didn't listen to what she said, but go back to the beginning. Whatever nerve it is, it's supposed to affect that nerve. Now, think about that. Eight hours, seven days a week, 56 hours a week, times four, times 52 weeks. Come on, guys. If you haven't noticed the first single thing I noticed about this, then you need to do your research because look it. Look what they gave us. A little, a little hint right there. See that butterfly? They always leave their symbols. You, well, their symbols will be their downfall. If you've never listened to Q, you need to at least understand a little bit about that because I don't care what anybody says about Q being a LARP or what. In the beginning, it was not. There it is, the trigeminal nerve. This is called... <laughs> It, this is they're they're slapping us in the face with this, you guys. They're hoping you know nothing about your history and that you will just say yes, give it to me. This is called the monarch external trigeminal nerve stimulation, E T N S. Monarch, guys. What, what you don't know what I'm? Oh, here, let me here, let me show you. Monarch, as in monarch program. CIA monarch. Oh, you you don't know anything. Oh, okay, well we're gonna look at this right now because this monarch program has an extensive history. It usually it it, it showed its face a lot when Hollywood started throwing the symbols out at everybody. Hollywood starlets, excuse me, Hollywood hit me. Hollywood starlets would turn up, you know, with it, like you see in the picture. Um, but there's more. So let me explain this to you. This uh, this device, the, the ETNS system, okay, here we go. It now has the FDA's blessing, as it says. This is Gizmodo. Um, I tried to have a little bit of left and right here, but I, I'm just trying to get through this. So you understand what the device is before I show you the history of the Monarch the Monarch MK Ultra program, and that they are now using technology to use it on our kids. Come on, there we go. Sorry, I just wanted to get rid of it. All right. So what else are they using these devices for? You know, it can't just be for one thing. They're not using it just for ADHD. If they've come up with a device for ADHD, then they've had to come up with a device for other things, right? Well, of course they have. Look at STEM 10s, the next wave in fitness technology, guys. This is a whole, uh, uh, a whole store of uh, electro, whatever, electro neuro something devices, to basically help you in with insomnia, pain, and muscle conditioning, um, history of CES therapy, if you, myocom electrodes. I don't want to click there for info. I'll click there for info in a minute. Stop. Typical results. How long does it last? You'll feel your symptoms. This is okay. This one right here is. Let's see. 
Experience Myocom. Myocom is a cranial electrostimulation therapy device, FDA cleared to improve depression, anxiety, and insomnia. Look at that, guys. This one has a rechargeable battery and a carbon ear clip, electrodes or cloth electrode option. They are all included in this easy to use, discreet, handheld device that you use 20 to 30 minutes a day. And bingo, bingo, drug free, no long-term side effects. Doesn't that just sound great? Doesn't that sound so simple? No. There, why would you allow anyone to mess with your fucking brain? I'm not that I care about monetizing this video at this point because it's I'm serious. Why would you let someone mess with your brain or your child's brain? This is like the only thing we have left in this godforsaken world that we own our thoughts. Guys, these I'm gonna explain to you the origins of the monarch program. And you can choose to believe or not believe, but sooner or later, you're going to have to see that all the CIA documentation is out there. There's thousands of victims stories out there. You can only deny it to yourself so long before you realize that, yes, this, there's certain factions of the government who are paid but with your tax dollars to do things that are, you know, to, to, to do things that are not in our best interest as Americans. You know, they say the CIA was supposed to help us with, you know, foreign situations, nothing domestic. But boy, they sure have spent an awful lot of time messing with American citizens. Let's take a look. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Hold on, it's loading, guys. Sorry. All right, there we go. So, I don't remember reloading it. See, some things get crazy when I'm recording. So, the origins no, this article contains disturbing whatever. I just keep going back to the same spot. Hold on. Bingo. There we go. So Joseph Mengele, if you don't know who that is, it was a doctor and a, a doctor from the Nazi era. Uh, he did some terrible, terrible um, experiments on children. He was the he, he was given the title of the father of monarch programming, Joseph Mengele, ex Nazi concentration camp doctor, thousands of monarch mind controlled slaves in the U.S. They called him Dr. Green as their chief programmer. One, Dr. Fritz Springmeier, the Illuminati formula to create a mind control slave. That's where that information came from. Dr. Mengele of Auschwitz notoriety was the principal developer of the trauma-based monarch project in the CIA's MK Ultra mind control program. Mengele and approximately 5,000 high-ranking Nazis were secretly moved into the U.S., and South America in the aftermath of World War II in an Operation Designated Paperclip. You can look that up as well. Um, the Nazis continued their work in developing mind control and rocketry technologies in secret underground military bases. The only thing we were told about the rocketry work was with the former Nazi star celebrities like Warner von Braun, the killers, torturers, and mutilators of the innocent human beings were kept discreetly out of sight. But busy in U.S. underground facilities, which are military facilities, which gradually became home to thousands of kidnapped American children snatched off the streets, about one million per year, and placed in iron bar cages stacked from floor to ceiling as part of training. These children will be used would be used to further refine and perfect Mengele's mind control technologies. Uh, certain. Selected children, at least the ones who survived the training, would become future mind control slaves who could be used for uh, for thousands of different jobs, ranging anywhere from sex slavery to assassinations. A substantial portion of these children, who were considered expendable, 
were intentionally slaughtered in front of and by other children in order to traumatize the selected trainee into total compliance and submission. That's from number two, Kanadashi Mind Control and the Ultimate Terror. Mengele's research served a basis for the covert illegal CIA human research program named MKUltra. Here are some of the um, declassified CIA uh, paperwork, but we're going to look at some more of that uh, better in a minute. I, I'll go over it a little bit further down. I've got it in a PDF. So, Project MK Ultra ran from the early 1950s to at least the late 1960s using American and Canadian citizens as its test subjects. However, the scope of MK Ultra does not, however, stop. Experiments involving violent electroshocks, physical, mental torture, and abuse were systematic on many subjects, including children. Now they want you to turn around. Now when you look at this child, and I have more pictures of him. It says unidentified, or it's a girl, white female, between the ages of 8 and 10, subject underwent six months of using uh, a treatment of using heavy doses of LSD, which on the street we all know is acid. They they put this girl, a ten year old girl on high doses of acid, electroshock, and I can't read the next word deprivation something deprivation. Sensory that means they they isolated her. They left her alone, like in a room, you know, like uh, in in prison when they put you in. You know, shoe, and then you're in place by yourself for too long. You go crazy. Yeah, it's like, anyway, MK Ultra about uh, experience experiments under code name MK Ultra about early sixties. Subjects memory was erased, and her brain is that of a newborn baby. Oh my, that was in 90, 1961. Look, wow. Sorry, drink. Okay. Although the admitted goals of the project were to develop torture and interrogation methods to use on the country's enemies, some historians asserted that the project aimed to create Manchurian candidates, programmed to perform various acts such as assassinations and other covert missions. MK Ultra was brought to light by various commissions in the 1970s, including the Rockefeller Commission of 75. Although it claimed the CIA stopped such experiments after the commission, whistleblowers have come forth simply stating that the project went underground. And that Monarch, look one more time before I leave this page, Project Monarch, see it? Project Monarch. That Monarch programming has become the classified successor of M- MK Ultra, meaning it's not called MK Ultra anymore. It is now called Monarch Programming. Mo- now, wait a minute. Monarch Programming, what was this What was this little device called that they want to give you? Oh, a Monarch External Trigeminal Nerve Stimulation? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? They're not even trying to hide this anymore, guys. It's out in the open. It is in the open. So, back in the 60s, they did these um, tests on people, and they used LSD. Some of them, had it was with their permission, but some of them it was with not or not, you know, without permission. Oops, I think I just pressed the reload. I hope not. Maybe I did. We'll find out. This only works like this when I'm recording. I have great Wi-Fi all the way up until I'm recording. I think I need a new re- recording software. And unfortunately, I just am so comfortable with this one, I won't change it. Okay, distorted view of CIA Director Alan Dulles. That's him inside that giant whatever there. On April 10th of 53, Alan Dulles, the newly appointed director of the CIA, delivered a speech. Uh, Of course, it's going to go away. To get to a gathering of Princeton alumni, though the event was mundane, global tensions were running high, the Korean War was coming to an end. 
And earlier that week, New York Times had published a startling story asserting that American POWs may have been converted. I was an athletic by guy com- for my entire life. That's- by communist brainwashers. No, anyway. Hold on. Going to the gym four times a week, eating healthy foods. What the heck? Every time I lose a few pounds, they... Where is the ad? I'm trying to shut it off. I can't find it. I don't even care. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Anyway, um, it says some GIs were confessing to war crimes like carrying out germ warfare against communists. Others were reportedly brainwashed and had refused to return to the U.S. at all. As if that weren't enough, the U.S. was weeks away from secretly sponsoring the overthrow of a democratically elected leader in Iran, which we successfully did. Okay. Dulles had just become the first civilian director of the agency, growing more powerful day by the day. And the speech provided an early glimpse into his priorities for the CIA. In the past few years, we have become accustomed to hearing much about the battle for men's minds, the war of ideologies, he told attendees. I wonder, however, whether we clearly perceive the magnitude of the problem. Whether we realize how sinister the battle for men's minds have become in Soviet hands. We might call it in its new form brain warfare. You guys, again, you might call it what? Brain warfare. Wait a minute. What was that again they want to give you? For your child so you can stop giving them their Ritalin? Oh, that's right. A monarch external trigeminal nerve stimulator on their brain eight hours a day. They want you to do this to your own child. They don't even have to sneak it anymore. They want you to do it to them. And they'll take over the rest between the TV and their phones and their tablets and their computers and their games and all the other things that they put little little things into to brainwash these children this will make it easier these the children who have ADHD and have other mental health disorders are already um how do I put this there are they they're already um vulnerable they're v- already vulnerable and the CIA looks at them and doesn't think vulnerable. They think perfect. Okay. Right. I'm going to get rid of some of these so the other ones will uh, go a little faster. Yep, we're going to look at this one. The Guardian. This is what I was talking about, how this was not just the United States, guys. This was Canada. Our CIA has the right to do this all over the world. The only place they're not supposed to do it is the United States, but they do anyway. Tell me why we even vote in a president when the CIA has this much control over our lives. I'm not done yet, guys, because it gets worse towards the end when you find out the other things that are in place right now. All of this coming together should scare the S-H-I-T out of you. The toxic legacy of Canada's CIA brainwashing experiments, quote, they strip you of your soul. Sorry if you hear the dog bark next door, guys. Oh, hang on. There. Every time she leaves to go to get her lotto tickets, the dog barks. All right, there we go. Sorry. Okay. I can't believe some of this. I can't believe they're doing it so blatant. So in our face. And I had to say, I wanted to get this out yesterday, guys. It was so important. I couldn't cut it down any more than I already have. I have to have this much. Hang on. I want to get rid of this one because it's also being a pain in the butt. There we go. All right. So we've already went over what this was in the 50s and 60s. At the very same time, experiments took place at the Allen Memorial Institute 
Um, 1950s and 60s, a Montreal hospital subjected psychiatric patients to electroshock, drug-induced sleep, and huge doses of LSD. Families are still grappling with the effects. Sari Ann Johnson had always known the broad strokes of her maternal grandmother's story. Velma Orlico checked herself into a renowned Canadian psychiatric hospital, hoping to help with some postpartum depression. She was in and out of the clinic for three years, but instead of improving, her condition deteriorated and her personality went, underwent jarring changes. And more than two decades passed before Johnson and her family had an explanation, and it was much stranger than any of them could imagine. In 77, it emerged the CIA had been funding experiments in mind control brainwashing at the Institute as part of a North America-wide project known as MK Ultra Monarch Programming. At the same time, the U.S. agency was scrambling to deepen its understanding of brainwashing. They want control of man's mind. Why? Think about it. Think about the things they could do if they can control each one of our minds. After a handful of Americans captured during the Korean War had publicly praised communism and denounced the U.S. At 19, or excuse me, in 1957, the interest brought the agency north of the border where a Scottish-born psychiatrist, Ewan Cameron, was trying to discover whether doctors could erase... <laughs> a person's mind and install new patterns of behavior. Orlico was one of the several hundred patients who became an unwitting subject of these experiments. It is impossible to believe some of the things he did to his patients are so horrible and unbelievable. It sounds like stuff of nightmares. Patients were subjected to high voltage electroshock several times a day, forced to into drug-induced sleeps that could last months and injected with mega doses of LSD. After reducing them to a childlike state, at times stripping them of all basic skills of how, as to how to dress themselves or even tie their shoes, Cameron would attempt to reprogram them by bombarding them with recorded messages for up to 16 hours at a time. First came negative messages about their inadequacies, followed by positive ones, in some cases repeated up to a half a million times. He couldn't get his patients to listen to them enough, so he put speakers in football helmets and locked them on their heads. They were going crazy, banging their heads into the walls, so he figured he could put them into a drug-induced sleep coma and play the tapes as long as he needed. Along with the intensive bouts of electro, electroshock therapy, Johnson's grandmother was given injections of LSD on 14 occasions. She said that it made her feel like, oops, there's an ad coming. She said that it made her feel like her bones were melting. Um, I don't want, oh, sorry. And she would say, I don't want these. And the doctors and nurses would say to her, you're a bad wife. You're a bad <clears throat> excuse me, you're a bad mother. If you wanted to get better, you would do this for your family. Think of your daughter. Orlico died when Johnson was 13. Her experience and the profound imprint it left on her family has influenced Johnson's artwork. I knew even at a very young age that my grandmother was not like other grandmothers. Her hair, she had a hair trigger for nerves and anger. If someone bumped into her or if she was at a restaurant and someone spilled something, she would explode. She wouldn't hurt anybody. She would just scream and yell and it would take hours to calm her down. Johnson was close to her grandmother. So you guys understand like this, this is the type of victims that are there. There are thousands of them in North America, not just U.S. because the CIA took this MK Ultra all through North America. It's disgusting. It really is. It, I, I'm like emotional about it because I can't believe they're being so, um, it's like a slap in the face. Ah, they ain't going to recognize this. They're going to think we're doing this for, to help their kids to get off them pills. Well, guess what? Not with K420 trying to help. This was Pro Project Monarch's sex, sex kitten beta programming. 
what are the signs of that of this? And this doesn't mean everybody that's wearing animal print. However, because they're so blatant about their symbols, and they want everybody to see one of the things that they teach them is you know when they're doing the sex kitten training is that the animal print signifies see the programming. The victims are wives, girlfriends, fiancés, daughters, sisters, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, nieces, cousins, granddaughters, partners, best friends, beans, and more. Completely unaware, ubiquitous, covert deployment. I mean, they don't even know they've had this training. They don't even know they're programmed at any point in time. The CIA can, can mess with their brain, change who they are, and use them to do what they want with them. If you know what I'm saying. Check it out. Look at all that animal print. Look at it. Look at all that animal print. I'm not saying all of them, but you damn sure know who's who. You damn sure know who's who. Don't you? Oh, look at that. We got even got a minor. Wow. Anyway, let's get going on this. This is the PDF, one of the PDFs from the CIA. No, I'm not reading you 143 pages. What I will show you is what it looks like so that if you, the parent, want to go read about what our CIA did, and because I don't put the I don't have the ability to put the descriptions down below. It looks like this. It's called um, the Monarch, Monarch, the New Phoenix Program by Marshall Thomas, and you will get 143 pages. And yes, it's all, you need to read them all because it's got Operation Northwoods, Mockingbird, Paperclip. Um, I believe there's a couple other Agent Orange. One of the ones I'm about to do next to. Um, it's got the whole MK Ultra. It's got the victim's testimony. There's just a few of them. Then it goes on. It talks. It keeps going on past MK Ultra. All, some things they've done recently. And I'm telling you that this damn brain thing for our kids is one of those things. Okay. Sorry, I needed a drink. So, the next thing is. Um, right here, during the early period of the Cold War, CIA be became convinced communists had discovered a drug or technique that allowed them to see, this is what happened. They felt like Russia, the big scary Russia, had a drug or had figured out how to control the mind. And you know the U.S., Oh, bitch, you ain't, you're not coming out with that first. We are the U.S., and we are big and bad, and we're the baddest in the world, and we're, give me that shit because we're coming out with it first. And then you know what happened? Their dumb asses figured it out somewhere along the line that Russia never had nothing. And all they did to do to turn those soldiers against the U.S. was tell them the truth about things. But that's a whole nother day. Anyway, this guy right here, CIA chemist Sidney Gottlieb, headed up the agency's secret MK Ultra program. He was charged with developing a mind control drug that could be weaponized against enemies, meaning something you could shoot at someone your enemy and that, that that you could control their mind, which would then control their actions. Or you in a, you make a, a drug that when you capture your enemy, you can get you know force them to take. I don't know, but this is what they were coming up with, you guys. This is what. And, and in the meantime, what were they doing? The same thing that they always did: torture, ranging from electroshock therapy and high doses of LSD. It's insane. And this is where it gets worse. The National Institute of Mental Health. Technology has opened a new frontier in mental health support and data collection. 
guys, this is about to get really freaking freaky. Mobile devices like cell phones, smartphones, and tablets are giving the public, doctors, and researchers new ways to access, help monitor progress, and increase understandings of mental well-being. Mobile mental health support can be very simple but effective. For example, anybody with the ability to send a text message can contact a crisis center. New technology can also be packaged into an extremely sophisticated app for smartphones or tablets. Such apps might use the device's built-in sensors to collect information on the user's typical behavior patterns. If the app detects a change, uh oh, where'd it go? Okay, if the app detects a change in behavior, it may provide a signal that help is needed before a crisis occurs. Are you guys listening? They are taking data from mental health apps and, and, and doctor apps off your phones and tablets all across the world, and they are using that to target you. They want to say, oh, this one here has a mental health problem, and then they want to red flag you and say, I'm sorry, but because of your mental health, you can no longer purchase a gun. We don't, that's exactly what their intentions are. I just want you to understand that. I want you to understand that they have no help in, in store for you. It says convenience, anonymity, anonymity, anonymity. Oh, wow. Anonymity. There we go. An introduction to care, lower cost, service to more people, interest, 24 hour service, consistency, objective data collection. The new era of mental health technology offers great opportunities, but raises a number of concerns. Here are some of the concerns that software developers are focusing on. Effectiveness, for whom and what, um, privacy, guidance, regulation, and overselling. My point is self man, they're making all of these apps to collect this data, right? PTSD, there you go. Look, I have PTSD. Dude, now I don't get a gun. If I if I put that PTSD on an app that I'm, I'm trying to get help or trying to get uh, therapy through, then that forever will f- mark me as a mental health patient and therefore I will never be able to own a gun, own and operate a gun again. I won't be able to protect myself. Well, guess what? The Department of what? Defense, of course. The Department of Defense unveils a mental health program to monitor service members' health. Well, look, guys, don't feel don't don't feel bad. We're we're taking all the soldiers' data too. DARPA, good old DARPA is working on a remote patient monitoring program that would collect data, health data from the members of the armed services through their smartphones. Hey guys in the service, I'm sure this is exactly what you want. Your little texts and messages home to your girlfriends. Yeah, or your boyfriends or your husbands or your wives or your your not husband, wife, whatever. Okay, any point being is that when you're privately speaking to a family member that is in another country because you're in a war zone do you really want america collecting that darpa darpa the defense agency collecting that information and using whatever it is that they feel that they've gathered from that information against you to target you this is just like the chinese social system social economy system okay listen Go look, go look what's going on in China right now. The social credit score crap. This mental health thing is the very first step towards that happening. Mark my words. We'll have that conversation one day. And it just probably will be a day that is too late to do anything about it. I think it's already too late, to be completely honest. Okay. Two more, guys. All right, so this is where it gets important. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I didn't mean that one. Sorry. There we go. This is where it gets important, okay? The Guardian. From mind control to murder. How a deadly fall revealed the CIA's darkest secrets. Okay, guys. In 53, Frank Olson died. 
because of clandestine U.S. government experience, it took, experiments. It took decades for his family to get closer to the truth. It says, um, glass shattered high above 7th Avenue in Manhattan before dawn on a cold morning in 53. Seconds later, a body hit the sidewalk. Jimmy, the doorman at the hotel, was momentarily stunned. Then he turned, ran into the lo lobby and said, we got a jumper, we got a jumper. It goes on and then proceeds to, um, you know, he's dead, obviously. It goes on and proceeds to figure out who he is and all that stuff. Um, naturally, they were, his kids and family were shocked, but they had no choice other than to accept what they were told. And it says the funeral was held with a closed casket. There the case may have ended. Decades later, however, spectacular revelations cast Olson's death in a completely new light. First, the CIA admitted that shortly before he died, Olson's colleagues had lured him to a treat and fed him LSD without his knowledge. Then it turned out Olson had talked about leaving his CIA and told his wife that he made a terrible mistake. Slowly, a counter-narrative emerged. Olson was disturbed about his work and wanted to quit, leading his comrades to consider him a risk. All of this led to 101 8 a that's the room he jumped from very good article guys come check it out i don't have time to read it to you you want to know more about what the cia has done during these experiments to keep keep it from getting out read about frank olson and his uh quote jump from the hotel and last but not least I need you to know that before we go, what you are looking for, and you really should be looking up like um, symbols used by by. Well, it doesn't matter because the CRCIA, they're they're just not connected to anybody. You know, they're connected to everybody but nobody. So it's almost like you don't even know what to look for anymore. If they had to put a butterfly on this and call it Monarch. I still would have done a video on it, but I wouldn't have had the connection so quickly. They just slapped me in the face with it. That's all. They they had no. They didn't care that I was going to do a video on it or anybody else. The Monarch Mind Control Mystique. Doctors have alleged that di or di allegedly diagnosed Amanda Bynes with schizophrenia, but a faction of the internet believes Amanda is a victim of Monarch Mind Control, um, Illuminati practice used by by Team Nick to monetize and sexualize young starlets. It's very, very real. All right. Amanda Bynes' reign on Twitter terror, a reign of Twitter terror ended two weeks ago when authorities placed her on a 5150 cycle for setting a fire in her driveway. This is five years old, by the way, guys. Doctors have allegedly diagnosed her with schizophrenia, which would explain her proclivity to twerking on gym machines. Oh, wow. But then it goes down to say that, um, but this hasn't stopped a faction of the internet from believing Amanda is actually a victim of monarch mind control. I just, what I like about this article was it talks exactly about, how, uh, you know, the starlets that it said, Brittany, there's a video, go to Vice, guys. I, I don't really send people to a lot of places, but the last two articles that I showed you, the one about Frank Olson, and then this one, I really suggest as parents, before you use the device on your child's brain, if you don't understand what I'm telling you, you need to research Monarch on your own before you allow some doctor access to your kid's brain. That's the only thing we have left, guys. They've already taken everything from us. They're going to have our thoughts, too, our private, most intimate thoughts. I don't think so. Not mine. <laughs>